Chip and today we're going to look at 10 things that might be the cause of your dryer not turning on or heating. We're going to be using a typical Whirlpool style dryer for these examples. But if you have a Roper or Maytag, Kenmore, Conservator, a Man Estate, KitchenAid, if your dryer has a lint filter on the top right corner of that appliance and it looks like this, then the chances are that Whirlpool made it. But even if your dryer doesn't look like this, don't despair. All dryers have similar components, only they may be located in different areas in your dryer's plan form. But usually it's easy enough to access. So if you have a GE, a Hot Point, or a Samsung, or some other brand, you can still get value out of this video. So stick around, and if you stick around to the end, I'll give you a bonus 11th reason your dryer may not start. But this reason is more common on GE and higher end products. Uh, that are out there today. Always be sure your machine is unplugged when, when you're doing these checks uh, unless of course you're checking the correct voltage and you need to have the power source for that. Otherwise be sure your internet's not energized. You'll get shocked. So let's get right to the number one cause your dryer might not start. It's the door switch. Yeah, if your door switch is broken the dryer is not going to start no matter how hard you push that start button. One of the first indications that your door switch is failing is if you open the dryer's door and the drum keeps turning. In this case, case the door switch is broken and it's going to be stuck in the closed position. But it will usually not stay like this for long and it's going to eventually cause your dryer not to start. Now if you open the door and you push that little flapper button and you don't hear an audible click and there's no spring return when you let go, it's time to replace that, that door switch. Also, if you open the door and that little flapper's missing, then it's broken off and you're going to need to replace it too. And you can also check the continuity of the switch by using a multimeter that's set on ohms. And as I'm doing here, you can test continuity of, continuity of the two outside leads and when you activate the switch. Okay, that middle pin on these switches is to turn on a dryer's interior light if your dryer has that option. I'll say here, even if your dryer doesn't have an interior light, a door switch with this option will work on your dryer too. So either a two prong or three prong is going to work. To change the switch, you're going to need to have to remove that lint filter. And then these two screws, and then you can use a thin putty knife and depress two clip clips that are located in the front corners of the machine's top cover. And you can lift the cover and lay it back and then you can remove two screws located inside the door on either side of the switch flapper or the button. And then you can unplug the old switch from the dryer using the edge of your putty knife or a small screwdriver. I always leave that old switch plugged in until I have to disconnect it so it won't fall down inside the dryer while I'm removing it. I also plug the replacement switch in before installing it on the door for the same reason. So number two, okay, the next thing I check is the power source. I've seen a lot of videos where the technician is checking the power source at the receptacle, but I find it's much easier to just remove the, the cover plate at the dryer because if it checks good there, you know that you're getting power directly to the machine. And to check for power, you want to set your multimeter to read alternating current voltage, also known as AC voltage, and it may be marked uh, with this symbol on your multimeter. If you touch uh, one of your leads to either of the outer uh, leads on, on that lug, they, uh, they should read somewhere between 220 and 250 volts. And now by touching one lead to the center lug and the other to one of those outside lugs, you should be reading anywhere from 110 to 125 volts. If you don't see these voltages and you have something wrong and your dryer is not going to operate correctly. And don't be fooled if you read a correct voltage across the two outer leads. You always check for the correct voltage at all three points because incorrect wiring at the control panel or the receptacle can be the problem. And if you find this problem, ask if there's been uh, some recent electrical work in the home. I found that some older dryers may work if the polarity of the circuit is wired incorrectly. And when you, a homeowner buys a new dryer, it's not going to work on the same receptacle. Number three. Okay, I'm going to go through these uh, problems in the order that I would if I were doing a service call. So we're going to, we're going to deal with the most likely problems in the order of the, of the most probable problem. So next we're going to have to access the parts that are in the rear of our Whirlpool style machine. Now if you have a GE or a Hot Point or a Samsung, then these components are going to be accessible through the front of your machine.
once we have our cover off, we need to check the blower side thermal fuse. If your dryer has an electric element and it does start, but it won't heat, then you can skip, skip this component. Because if this component is blown in an electrically heated machine, nothing's going to work. But if you have a gas dryer, then your dryer might start if this component is blown, but it's going to prevent the burner from igniting. So to check this component, we want to unplug one of those spade plugs on it and check for continuity uh, again using your multimeter uh, set to ohms. So if you, if you check it across those two spade connectors and it checks out, then you can move on to your fourth reason that your dryer is not working. Now if your dryer is coming on but it's not heating, then it could be this component. And this is going to be the high limit thermal fuse. And to check this, you want to unplug one of those spade plugs again and you want to check across those two leads for continuity. And if it fails, then you, it's going to have to be replaced. Now in my experience, if this component is blown out, it's because something caused that temperature to go too high. And I always install a complete thermal fuse kit that has all of these parts in it because one or of all these components uh, back here caused that dryer to overheat and, or it could be the element shorting to the frame and, and staying energized even when the cycling thermostat or the working thermostat opens. If you do discover that the element is a problem and we're going to get to that later then you'll only have to replace this part and not the whole kit. But if one of these other components is not uh, opening when it should it'll blow this this part out too so number five so next we're going to check the working thermostat and that's going to be the one that's located next to the element and it's usually connected to the element itself by an attached spade connector or a short jumper wire you want to unplug one of the leads again and check for continuity across the thermostat and if it fails you need to change it so the number six reason is that we're going to jump back over to the, the blower side and we're going to check the cycling thermostat and that's going to be the one that has the four spade connectors on it. And you want to unplug one of the large spade plugs and you check for continuity. Now the center plugs on this device won't stop your dryer from heating but it's going to ca cause the uh, temperature control to malfunction. Now these are connected to a small inner coil that, that will heat the bimetallic uh, part of the thermostat and cause it to open before its usual 155 degree limit. And you can check if uh, you can check its continuity if you'd like, uh, but uh, be aware if you get if you have a multimeter that's set to give you an audible tone when it checks continuity, it's going to check bad every time. Uh, you must have it set for a digital readout function. I don't know why my fluke meter won't give an audible tone when you're checking across the coils of this thing, but I've asked other people that have different meters and they act the same way. If anybody knows the answer to this, I'd be grateful for a comment uh, explaining why this is. The seventh reason your dryer may not be working is the element. Now, to check this, let's remove one spade connector like we do the others, and we're going to test continuity, continuity of the coils of the element by placing one lead on one connector and the other lead on the other. And if you have continuity, great. But before we stop here, let's also check that the element hasn't grounded to the frame of the machine. And you can check this by placing one multimeter lead on one of the spade plugs and then the other anywhere on the frame of the dryer. If you do have continuity, then somewhere inside the element, there is a coil wire touching the metal frame. And you need to be sure to check both spade connectors to the frame because you could have a situation where the coil's broken inside and only one part of the coil's open and the other could be welded to the frame. So you can also have a situation where the, whole, the coil gets hot and it expands and, and uh, contacts the frame during operation and it won't turn off. It continuously heats. And you can watch this, this video uh, right up here and see how I discovered this problem. You should always disassemble the element and look for bent coil sections and witness marks where the coils could be touching uh, when they get hot. Okay, if all these check out, then the next parts we need to check will be uh, located inside the console. And once we get the console open, let's find the start switch. Usually it's going to be a push to start switch and you guessed it, we're going to have to check for continuity again. 
So you're going to set your multimeter to read ohms and unplug one of the spade connectors on the back of the switch. And you might need to use some alligator clips on your leads if you find it difficult to touch both connectors uh, while reaching over and pushing the start button. So if you get a good continuity reading when you press the button, then the switch is going to be good and you don't need to replace it. So number nine, the timer. Let's look at the timer. If your timer is malfunctioning, then it's most likely that your dryer is going to be coming on, but it's not going to be heating. Uh, but it could also be the reason your dryer won't start, but that's less probable. So to check uh, if your timer is working, find the two thickest wires on the back of, the, of the, this part of the timer, and you want to unplug them. And first, you might want to take a picture of the wiring so that you can put them back in the correct place that you took them off. So these two thick wires are the lines that are in the circuit that energizes your element. Uh, so let's see if the timer is allowing power to get to those element coils. If you look at the timer, select an area where the dryer should be heating, like the uh, time dryer or something like that. Uh, now you want to check for continuity between these two points where, these, uh, where those thick wires are connected. And you want to check each cycle on that timer where you should have heat to see if it works on every setting. Now obviously the fluff cycle doesn't heat or any area where it says no heat on the, on the console. There's not going to be any continuity. But if your timer fails this test then you'll have to replace it or you might want to watch this video right up here that I might have a workaround for you that, that will uh, help you get by. So number 10 is going to be the last thing you should check if all these other things pass. It's going to be the motor switch. Now this is a pretty robust part and it rarely fails but when it does it's a pain to change. So the way this thing works is when a centrifugal device spins up when the motor starts it flings the weight outward that engages an electrical switch that energizes the element. And this is a safety feature that prevents the element from glowing hot without the motor that's driving the drum and the fan to also be running. Without that airflow over the coils, the element uh, would overheat and melt and it'd short out throwing elect electrical sparks and hot pieces of metal all over the back of that unit. So to check uh, on these Whirlpool machines, we need to access the motor. So to do this, we're going to have to remove those two screws on the top, just like we did to change the door switch. We're going to lift the top and we're going to find two 5 16 inch screws at the inner top corners. You can remove those screws, unplug the door switch, lift up and out on the front cabinet frame and you want to set it aside. Now you want to reach in at the bottom and you want to take the belt off the motor pulley and then you want to lift the drum out and set it aside too. Now with the motor exposed you want to find the motor plug and you lift the clips at each side of the plug and disconnect it from the motor. And so now we're going to test the continuity of the motor switch. And on the switch, there's going to be a number of connectors, and the ones we're looking for on this model of machine, I'm not sure if this is different on GE's or Hot Points or other machines, but on this type of machine, we need to find the two outermost connectors. And if you have some leads with alligator clips on the ends, it's going to make this test uh, so much easier. Okay, so set your multimeter to ohms again and attach your clips to those connectors on the outside of the motor switch. And you want to reach inside the motor and pull this part shown here toward the outside of the motor until it clicks. Now if it clicks as seen on the multimeter, it's going to pass the test. If you have a bad switch, then you're, you're going to have to change it. And if you do have to change it, then you need to take pictures and be very careful not to break those thin copper windings that are going back into the motor. These spade connections are really hard. Uh, to get off and it's easy to break these little wires and if you do that means a new motor and the bright side of this uh, mistake is that a new motor comes with a motor switch that's already installed okay if you've made it this far then you're still around for the bonus reason for that your dryer won't start and that's going to be the belt tension switch this whirlpool style machine that we've been looking at doesn't have one of these but your higher end whirlpools, Samsung's and G hot point models, they have a tension switch that's normally closed. And when a drum belt breaks, it releases a lever that opens this de these devices and it prevents your dryer from starting. Now you can test this on an older GE by holding down that start switch and when you release it, the dryer quits. Uh, you push that switch and that dryer acts like it's coming on, but you turn it loose and it, it's, it 
goes off. And if it does that, and you know you have a broken belt. So thanks for watching. Please consider subscription and every push of that like button makes me smile. Until the next one, thanks for watching.